someone stole my donuts, now you're all gonna pay. Hello everyone, my name is Tyson, and today I'm going to be revising my DOSBox video, as I feel the original doesn't hold up to what I'm making now. It also doesn't cover some of the easier methods of playing DOS games on modern hardware, outside of buying it digitally. Anyway, without any further ado, let's begin! To start this off, I'm just going to copy a clip from my original DOSBox tutorial video to explain to you what Abandonware is, in case you don't already know. Before we get into all this, let me give you a brief overview of what DOSBox is. DOSBox is a program meant to emulate the hardware and software necessary to run computer games that have far become obsolete. You may be asking, why would anyone want to do this? The main answers are nostalgia and that some people feel that older games are actually far superior in design and feel. Now that's out of the way, first things first, you're going to want to obtain MS-DOS games. You can do this from a number of websites that host Abandonware, or older games that the copyrights to have been abandoned, ergo the phrase Abandonware, and you can legally obtain them for free. This is important, so you understand why a lot of much older DOS games are legally free to download. Now that that's explained, first you're going to want to go ahead and download DOSBox itself which you can get from the official website or any number of emulator slash abandonware sites. A link to the DOSBox official site will be in the description. Once you have that, go ahead and extract it or install it, depending on which version you downloaded. I would recommend making the directory easy to find, for instance, in the root of your hard drive. DOS or DOSBox will do for its name. Now go ahead and open it and create a folder called Games. Once that's done, you'll need to obtain your files for your DOS games. These can be found on a number of websites, but the only one I'll be recommending today is Abandonia, as it's one of the safest sites to download Abandonware regarding legalities. Once you've found a game, just download it and extract it to its own folder inside the DOSBox slash games folder. If you have the floppies on a floppy drive, great! Unfortunately, I don't have a floppy drive, but I can still walk you through it. If what I say in this video isn't sufficient, a supplementary video can be found in the description from someone who actually has a floppy drive. So what you'll want to do if you have a floppy drive is go ahead and create a folder for the game inside the games folder, as you would with downloading a game, keeping in mind to make the name less than 10 or so characters, and with no spaces if you want to open the game straight from DOSBox like a pro. If you want to do it the easy way, don't worry about the name of the folder, just make sure there is a folder. Anyway. Once you have a folder for the game, just go ahead and drag all of the files into the folder. If that doesn't work, you'll need to either A, mount the floppy and open the executable through the command prompt, B, use the commands in the startup parameters to do any necessary setup automatically, or C, drag the executable of the installer slash game, depending on the game, straight into the DOSBox executable. That is going to be the easiest way to do it without any additional programs if the game you want to play requires no real setup. The easiest way to pull this off would be to have your shortcut for DOSBox on your desktop with a shortcut to the games folder right next to it so that all you need to do is open the games folder, each game possibly having an exe or bat file that needs to be open to start, find the game you want, then drag its shortcut into the DOSBox shortcut on your desktop. Alright, so we've covered the easy way of opening games straight out of DOSBox. Now let's talk about opening it with command entries directly in DOSBox. This is for more advanced users, and potentially floppy users. So for novices who don't want to memorize a few commands just to play a game and would rather just have a list, skip ahead to the timestamp shown on screen. There's no shame in it, I actually prefer the latter method, for just general playing. Though I encourage first time users of DOSBox, moreover DOS in general, who want the most authentic experience to try it out this way at least once. Well, no time like the present, go ahead and open DOSBox up. Just to recap, your games should be in the folder C colon backslash DOSBox backslash games for easy access, primarily for this method. So to start, go ahead and mount the folder of the game you want to play. You can also mount the games folder, then type CD your games folder to move deeper into the folders and open your game. If you followed my instructions, put it in the folder I mentioned, and kept the name under 10 or so characters, it should work. As a callback to the original video I did, let's go ahead and demonstrate this with Doom. So to mount a folder, you'll want to enter the following. Mount, any letter, B in this case, C colon backslash 
DOSBox backslash games backslash doom. If you're working with original files, you're going to have to install the game. Type in the letter of the drive you mounted again, B for me, followed by a colon, then hit enter to navigate to your game directory. Once you're in, in Doom's case, the install file is called install.bat. Just open that, then press the letter of your mounted drive, and let it run. I recommend holding control and repeatedly tapping F12 to make DOSBox run at a higher clock to speed up the install process, then reducing it back down with control and F11. Once that finishes installing, it'll have you set up the game, which includes choosing a music and sound effects processing card. Just use the settings I'm showing here for the best sounding results in Doom, or use your preferred sound processor if you have one. Outside of my settings, it gets very bleep and bloopy. Don't forget to also set your controls and you're done. Now, as I mentioned, you can just drag and drop the game onto DOSBox, but you know it's even easier and more reliable after you set it up? A GUI. What's a GUI, you ask? That stands for Graphical User Interface. It's what you can use to visually interact with DOSBox rather than just typing in commands. A GUI is a general term referring to any graphical user interface, but yay, that's what it is in this case. So how does it work? Well, it's rather simple. You install it, go to the preferences, and find your DOSBox's executable. From there, you can very easily click the little plus, find a game, and you're ready to go so long as it's already installed. If a game requires an install and you don't want to delve into commands, simply add in the installer exe into its own category called setup slash installers. After that, before you click OK, click the parameters text box and type in dash mount space C space and then type in the directory of your game. In my current case, I'm demonstrating Tetris Classic. So what you do is click the plus, type in a name, type in the parameters, in my case, mount c dosbox games tetris then click the ellipses to open the installer click ok then double click what i named tetris installer everything is going well except i don't actually have the floppy thankfully the game files are already accessible so to play the game simply click the plus name the game in this case find tetris sc.exe then click ok just double click the name and you're ready to play just make sure you select VGA and Sound Blaster Pro, otherwise you're going to be playing with lowered settings. Unless you want to do that, in which case, by all means, I'm just giving advice. There are many other programs you can use for this type of feature. This is just my preference. Anyway guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to rate it with a thumbs up. It would also help me out a lot if you shared the video with your friends. And if you'd like to see some of my other content, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I do these types of videos on occasion, but I primarily do gaming content such as reviews and let's plays. If you'd like to support the channel, please go ahead and go to my Patreon link shown here in the video and down in the description. Anyway guys, this is Retro Hellspawn, signing off.